Southeast Asia has been digitizing rapidly for a number of years. In 2019, around three in five of the population had regular access to the internet, according to Google, Tomasek and Bain, up from one in five just over a decade before. But the pandemic brought record demand for tech apps in the region. In 2020, more than 40 million people in Southeast Asia came online for the first time, the researchers say. Much of this was prompted by COVID-19 lockdowns and increased reliance on digital finance, e-commerce and transport apps. Investment followed. Tech entrepreneurs in the region attracted a record $21.5 billion of private capital in 2021, up from $8.8 billion in 2020, according to Prequin. 500 Global is one U.S.-based venture capital fund that is committed to the Southeast Asian market. An early investor in some of the region's biggest names like Grab, Carousel, Bukalapak, and now has its eye on younger players as well. I spoke with its co-founder and CEO, Christine Tsai, about emerging trends and headwinds to come. Southeast Asia specifically, when we first started investing, was a very nascent market. But now, today in 2022, it's a completely different story. She is the mama bear who looks after the founders she invests in. Tsai is at the helm of a fund worth more than $2.8 billion. Her company's mission? To uplift people and economies around the world through entrepreneurship. You studied cognitive science at Berkeley. You worked at YouTube and Google. So what led you to starting and running your own venture capital firm? Early on at Google, I didn't know what venture capital was, and that was kind of an opaque industry to me. But you know, by the time I left Google, what was so exciting for me to then go and start my own venture firm was the fact that venture is a role where you can really help um, help founders build the next generational companies or iconic technology. 500 Global has worked with over 2,500 companies. How many of those companies are from Southeast Asia? So our Southeast Asia portfolio is more than 300 companies at this point and growing. They are spread across Singapore, Malaysia, um, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, uh, a couple in the Philippines, um, and even some of the emerging markets like uh, Cambodia. So our, our portfolio overall in Southeast Asia is about uh, seven unicorns, which is you know, companies valued at a billion dollars or higher. What do you look out for to make and to find that investment opportunity? Are there any particular concepts or personalities that you look out for? Ultimately, the most important thing is the team. We have a lot of founders who've been successful, who have been more humble or more coachable. They aren't the stereotypical loud personalities. But we also do look at what is it that they're building? Could this be a category leader in the region if it's a sort of, quote, copycat of a model that's in another part of the world, say the U.S.? Uh, what does this team have to make this model work in, in the region? Now, some Southeast Asian tech startups that have gone public recently, including 500 global portfolio companies like Bukalapak, like Grab, um, have seen their share prices tumble within months of IPO. There's that downward pressure on them. So what's happening here? If you think back to 2020, 2021, specifically for, for venture, it was a really unprecedented year for funding. There was a lot of concern about valuations getting out of control. And I think what you're seeing now is really um, certainly a, a correction, at least specifically for venture. There are about 1,000 new unicorns this year. Every day, more than one unicorn is minted. It seems that it's not really a rare creature anymore. <laughs> is being a unicorn something that entrepreneurs should still aim for? Absolutely not. If I meet a founder that says my goal is to be a unicorn, I, I do have question marks because uh, being a founder is, is such a difficult journey. And what I like to see is that they're really excited and passionate about what they're building, um, empathy for their target customer, and they really just want to build something iconic and big, not necessarily have a price tag on it. So what are the areas of opportunity in Southeast Asia, especially given all the economic uncertainty out there? We have seen um, a lot of opportunity around a broader category that we call uh, rural digitization. So this could be around fintech and, and, and uh, payments and, and uh, financial inclusion, as well as uh, commerce, um, consumer commerce, things that are in uh, kind of more frontier tech or mobility. And those are areas that we've been quite excited about. The region is not immune to the global economic slowdown. Rising interest rates and inflation here in the United States and in Europe could spell further insecurity for business across Asia. This is according to Prequent. 
But in the long run, markets across Southeast Asia remain ones to watch. This is according to some experts because of rapidly growing populations and emerging digital economies that could drive new opportunities in tech innovation. For more on these stories and others, check out our website. Just go to cnn.com slash Marketplace Asia. I'm Christy Lou Stout in Los Angeles. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.